Dr. Mahajan, thank you so much for joining us at BW Healthcare World. It's always been a pleasure to uh, you know have a conversation with you. Uh, Dr. Mahajan, uh, you know what I want to really understand from you is that how has the year 2022 been for the diagnostics industry? What have been the major highlights or important aspects that can define the year 2022? Uh, thank you very much for having me on your uh, show. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to be talking to uh, anchors who know what they are asking and are serious about Indian healthcare. Now, uh, it, the the year 2022, I think, has been uh, good for the diagnostic center uh, sector uh, with the fading away of uh, COVID. It's still around, but you know uh, uh, the numbers are minuscule. Uh, the other routine diagnostic tests uh, actually picked up, which had gone down during the COVID era, and uh, have been continuously going up. So overall, I would say the numbers have been good. And uh, also what COVID has done probably is bring some focus onto wellness. Now, how that will translate in the years to come uh, into facilitating predictive medicine, uh, preventive care, uh, we uh, still uh, uh, will be seeing, but uh, the portents are pretty robust that uh, uh, the uh, you know healthcare as such has gone into the collective consciousness of the indian uh, 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 citizen and society and they have become conscious uh, the governments also are conscious of the fact that uh, especially during the second wave when uh, we were overwhelmed uh, you know many lives were lost uh, and, and so uh, a focus on prevention and for prevention, actually, uh, the diagnostics is the key. Whether lab medicine, simple tests like blood sugar, or just checking one's blood pressure at regular intervals to know whether one has hypertension or not. Then the other uh, uh, things like looking at uh, tuberculosis. Uh, we have uh, taken a pledge that by 2025, India would be free of tuberculosis. And for that, imaging as well as lab medicine both play a major role. Uh, and uh, cancer, which uh, is uh, you know increasing at a very, very rapid rate. For all of these, if we want to pick up these diseases early, if we want to treat them uh, uh, early and actually ensure a cure if uh, I mean all non-communicable diseases and on the other side uh, hopefully the viral illnesses will uh, stay below the surface uh, and we won't have another wave uh, but tuberculosis uh, uh, there is focus on and for all of this diagnosis is a must and so uh, it's been uh, good for this year for the diagnostics sector uh, with increased awareness. And uh, um, I'm sure this is the way things are going to go. Thank you, Dr. Mahajan. Now, uh, we've seen that 2022 has got back the focus on preventive as well as, you know, uh, people willingly wanting to get uh, diagnostics to keep their good health. But what are some of the trends that we expect to see in 2023 when it comes to imaging in diagnostics uh, around technology, around patient habits, around helping better outcomes? What does 2023 uh, look to you? I think it will be a bit more of the same. What I also visualize, something that happened uh, in the pathology sector which was uh, five, six large uh, chains uh, coming up with consolidation, which happened uh, over the last uh, decade, uh, decade and a half. Uh, I see consolidation happening also in the imaging and radiology sector, where still, uh, you know, it's very fragmented. There are no very large players. 
also the fact that uh, radiology and pathology actually are inseparable they go hand in hand so uh, uh, possibly uh, the the newer consolidation happening in a manner where what i like to call it is integrated diagnostics uh, which is a must both for uh, the preventive as well as treatment uh, of disease and so that is one trend i see clearly emerging in the next year on the public side i think uh, uh, there is a focus on of the government of india on uh, the preventive aspect and uh, towards that end they had announced 1.5 uh, lakh uh, 150000 uh, health and wellness centers the uh, hwcs and uh, i believe about 130000 are already functional uh, of course uh, to the best of my knowledge we still don't have a standard format which should be followed uh, and and i think that is going to evolve in 2023 as to uh, you know should a, a health and wellness clinic uh, uh, have a, <coughs> a lab of its own uh, or certain tests being done there the others being sent to maybe a higher lab uh, should there be x ray equipment there should there be ultrasound there uh, should there be a doctor manning it or a nurse practitioner or uh, maybe a, a ayush doctor uh, all these uh, uh, you know questions i believe are in a evolutionary stage and will be answered uh, in the coming months uh, and uh, years uh, because 150000 health and wellness uh, clinics would be uh, you know huge it would uh, uh, reach uh, to every corner also through this and through telemedicine is it that we will also be providing some kind of uh, treatment uh, to patients who come to the so uh, from that point of view uh i think there's a lot uh, that is in store got it so what are some of the expectations do you as a thought leader in the diagnostics and imaging industry have from the government also are there some expectations from the budget of 2023 see the expectations from the budget let me take that uh, first are the same as have been for uh, so many years which is that more money needs to be spent on uh, healthcare i mean we have uh, we had a target of 2.5% uh, of the gdp to be spent uh, on healthcare we are nowhere near that even if the government were to you know start uh, making attempts to reach that figure maybe in the next 2 3 years <coughs> that would be good uh, and and also you know focus on primary care on preventive care which there appears to be uh, but half of it is round is what we need uh, to to really determine uh, and and see that uh, you know things that are said uh, are are also done however as you know health is a state subject uh, uh, you know the central government can only make policies uh, provide the monies uh, it is up to every individual state government to put it into operation and uh, that's where i think uh, center state uh, also there needs to be harmonization of the effort so that uh, you know what the mandarin sitting in uh, nirman bhavan have uh, envisaged what niti ayog has really thought as the best for the country to percolate access should be provided uh, uh, that's very important number 2 what do we expect from the government the government is increasingly also becoming a payer of healthcare services a user of healthcare services <coughs> whether through I- similar cghs echs and what have you 
uh, they are increasingly becoming more and more a pair, which is a good thing uh, because uh, patients paying out of pocket, you know, it, it is uh, it, it's like a bolt from the blue. Unfortunately, uh, most Indians don't plan uh, for their healthcare expenses. And when that bolt from the blue comes, uh, you know, many are uh, pushed into poverty and uh, they run from pillar to post. So the government coming in as a pair is uh, definitely uh, useful. But at the same time, uh, the government needs to be aware that uh, viability of uh, the procedures, treatment, diagnosis, viability of hospitals, viability of uh, diagnostic centers, labs, which provide these services should also be kept in mind. What has happened that uh, currently the, the CGHS rates uh, are those that were finalized in the year 20, 2014. And, uh, you know, what the request from the healthcare fraternity, the providers and the entire healthcare ecosystem is that the government looks at this pragmatically. I know money is hard to come by, but uh, 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 for survival of the healthcare providers, it is a must that uh, some kind of inflation that happens uh, uh, should be built into the entire system. Viability is very, very important, especially uh, when it's quality healthcare that is being provided, uh, when it is NABL accredited labs, when it is NABH accredited uh, hospitals, which are providing uh, these services and not, uh, you know, uncredited, uh, uh, unaccredited ones. That's where I think the government needs to uh, take a fresh look. The private sector worked hand in hand <coughs> with the government during the pandemic and the, you know, the results are there for all to see. The global community has lauded the efforts uh, that uh, India made for treating uh, its people for the vaccination and for prevention. And uh, I think uh, we need to overcome the trust deficit that may exist between the public and the private sector and work very closely together so that viable systems are in place uh, 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 because ultimately the money that the private sector earns is plowed back into the system to upgrade uh, your technologies to <coughs> excuse me to open new centers to uh, go to the periphery to tier two tier three and to the rural areas and for that viability is a must so, uh, Dr. Mahajan, how important is hyper-local approach in the diagnostic space? Do you think it is important to set up centers localized in, uh, you know, where there's a population? Uh, because the reason I'm asking you is that how do you overcome a reporting challenge with the lack of trained manpower, which is not available, you know, not enough people are available? And how is technology going to be helping overcome this burden? Uh, that's a great question. And this is a problem that we're facing. That's why if you see it's the, the metros and the larger cities and towns, which have uh, a very good diagnostic facilities, both imaging and lab. Uh, and uh, the, the smaller facilities lack quality infrastructure, uh, lack quality doctors, whether radiologists or pathologists. And, uh, you know, even though the government has attempted in the last few years to increase the seats for post-graduation, uh, the number of radiologists and pathologists that we make uh, uh, every year, yet it's going to be at least a decade before we reach a number which is what is necessary for our, uh, the country of our scale. Now, this is where I think uh, 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 the telephony, and telemedicine, teleradiology, telepathology is uh, playing an increasing role. Teleradiology has been around for nearly two decades where, uh, you know, X-rays, CTs, MRIs can be reported from re remote locations. So you may have uh, a tier three uh, town in which uh, a center is set up 
and the reporting is done uh, uh, from Delhi or Mumbai or uh, elsewhere. In fact, we do report, as you know, on uh, scans that are done in the US or England or uh, Africa. So that, I think, is one way that we'll be able to overcome this uh, distance, the distance that exists, because also of the fact that uh, not too many of uh, these specialized doctors are willing to go to tier two, tier three uh, towns and cities. And that's why hyper localization becomes a, a problem. And we have to make use of technology. What has helped is that uh, the, the our, our uh, systems of uh, IT are very robust. The uh, costs have dramatically come down in the past 10 years. And <coughs> hence, you can do it at uh, you know, costs which are uh, affordable. The other revolution, uh, especially in imaging and radiology that's happening is artificial intelligence uh, algorithms. And we've, uh, uh, you know, played a little role in that through our own in AI startup, uh, which is called Carpal.ai, which was incubated within Mahajan Imaging. And uh, this is also a uh, 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 a new technology which is coming into its own where uh, the AI algorithms through computer systems can automatically auto measure things, can identify abnormalities, can even highlight what is wrong in an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI. And at the same time, newer algorithms being developed, which can even give you a report. Of course, these are early days. Uh, in Carpal, we follow a platform approach where any and every algorithm available, good, robust, US FDA cleared uh, algorithms uh, can be housed on Carpal. And uh, through existing PACs or radiology information systems or hospital information systems, these can be deployed. And, uh, you know, based on your need, you can use them. And uh, uh, this is software as a service. Uh, uh, and, and when you use a particular algorithm, that's when you have to pay. So this is also going to be, uh, 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 um, you know, a game changer. AI, I believe, is going to work as a radiologist assistant improving productivity of radiologists if today i report 25 scans maybe i'll be able to report 50 or 100 uh, uh, helped by ai it it we we think will also improve the efficacy and the accuracy of a radiologist make uh, a good uh, radiologist better and the better one the best and an average one good also uh, uh, it'll provide access like i said you know, irrespective of where uh, the scan is done, the images can be transferred and reported in the larger cities, in larger quality uh, uh, imaging and uh, lab uh, pathology companies. And also, I think this will overall, because of increased productivity of radiologists, uh, uh, bring down uh, healthcare costs. So this is an exciting new field, and we are right at the... Uh, forefront at the cutting edge of it, a lot of Indian startups uh, which are working in this field. So uh, uh, I think uh, access will be provided on the diagnostic side through this this route and also on the therapeutic side, uh, uh, you know, telemedicine is coming into its home, home health care, uh, we have elderly care, all of the things that are necessary and telemedicine and there I know of this uh, company in which uh, actually I'm associated called Meradoc, which uh, already is doing about 5,000, uh, uh, you know, uh, consults a day. And uh, it, it, the, the numbers are in, increasing exponentially. And so these are the ways that uh, we'll be able to provide access in our country. The government of India also uh, has its e-Sanjeevni portal through which uh, it provides uh, telemedicine facilities. And so I think uh, a combination of public, private, both uh, working uh, uh, separately or together uh, in the uh, months and years to come, I think uh, that is the way that we'll be able to provide uh, healthcare to our masses. 
the focus on digital health the focus on abdm uh, uh, will certainly change the paradigm and the fact that uh, the government uh, has thought of the unique health identity and uh, that all health records of a citizen of india irrespective of where he or she lives rural or urban uh, uh, metros tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 they will all be housed on it uh, i think is a step in the right direction of course it's easier said than done incentivization of both the public as well as the private sector would need to be done so that uh, uh, this uh, a, a, you know abdm is a success but that's the only way forward the transportability of data being able to access data anywhere uh, today you are in uh, you know jalandhar tomorrow you are in delhi and uh, next year you are in bangalore uh, your data will be accessible so all the right uh, you know thought processes are in place now the uh, uh, you know it is up to the uh, it experts to put that uh, whole skeleton uh, in place so that uh, uh, you know this really becomes a reality in the next uh, few years the margin you know i usually uh, keep talking of this that there are these three elements or the three pillars of healthcare which is aqa it is the accessibility quality and affordability you know absolutely define uh, and you touched upon accessibility and quality now with the technology that is available and you you know explained it in detail that you know how ai is coming teleradiology uh, what are your expansion plans in india both in the major cities as well as in tier 2 tier 3 using this technology see we are basically uh, a north india uh, based uh, company uh, we've been around for over 30 years and uh, today we have 10 centers but uh, in the coming few years we do hope to expand more uh, rapidly both organically as well as inorganically uh, uh, like i said i believe consolidation uh, is inevitable uh, as uh, m you know because there are advantages of scale uh, uh, you know uh, making it more affordable at the same time uh, retaining quality and uh, having skilled um, uh, radiologists skilled technicians uh, <coughs> and giving the patient the right kind of uh, experience when they come to any diagnostic center uh, and also i think the era of uh, pathology and radiology working in silos uh, is uh, is coming to an end i do think the next 10 years belong to the era of integrated diagnostics and where uh, you know, uh, uh, lab medicine, microbiology, pathology, genomics, nuclear medicine, PET CT, radiology, uh, and and other diagnostic technologies would all need to come together so that the clinician sitting in his uh, uh, outpatient department is given a comprehensive report and not report which is fragmented and then he's trying to make uh, <coughs> digest it and make uh, a conclusion from it and that also i feel uh, there would be a ai engine at the back end helping the what i call uh, integrated diagnostician a new field uh, of medicine that's going to come uh, uh, and helping the uh, treating doctor, physician, surgeon, whatever, uh, do what they are best at, which is treat. So this whole system would need to become very, very efficient. And that's how we will further be able to lower costs. India, you know, is the cheapest healthcare destination in the world. We are cheaper than Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Uh, providing quality healthcare and to go down further it is only technology that will help us do that uh, because uh, 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 you know young doctors aspirations uh, are such that uh, you know you won't be able to lower their salaries or uh, the salaries of those uh, technicians and other allied healthcare workers 
and and so you have to become more efficient and that's where i think uh, the newer technologies of telemedicine of artificial intelligence of integrated diagnostics you know, are going to be very very useful but a margin i can't agree with you more on this and uh, you know this has been a beautiful year in terms of helping people understand the importance of healthcare or their own care and uh, uh, you know the diagnostics industry both imaging as well as pathology side have brought in that uh, you know the care available to them accessible and i think it has become affordable thanks to technology as you mentioned uh, i want to thank you so much for your time and i think uh, you know uh, margin imaging has actually set the quality standards that everybody else is trying to follow and uh, that's a great service to the industry so thank you so much for your time and joining us on business world healthcare thank you so much for your kind words thank you it's a pleasure